Good morning. Thank you for joining St. James Episcopal Church in Mount Airy, Maryland for this fourth Sunday of Lent and our online worship. You can follow along with the slideshow. I've also put a link in the comments uh, where you can uh, click the link and download a bulletin if you would prefer. Uh, you're invited to pray, pray out loud all of the things that are in bold. Now we will begin our service today. that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us keep silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the his hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. 
for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his and mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. That he, that he redeemed, redeemed them, them from, from the, the hand foe. of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands. From the, from the east and from the west. From, from, from the, the north, north and from, from the, the south. south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food. And drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. And saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. And the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not the result of works, so that one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and the people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um. There we go. I think I'm unmuted now. That's okay. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture reading from John contains one of the most well-known verses from all of scripture. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Yet for all its familiarity, this verse is frequently misunderstood, or at least I would say misguidingly used as a litmus test for salvation quite often. Now, growing up in the Midwest, I often saw signs with John 316 in farm fields and along the roadside, or even at sporting events sometimes, as cliche as that seems. And I know this verse is a touchstone for many, offering hope and comfort. I don't deny that. And yet I have to say that never once when I saw those signs growing up, did I get a sense of God's love. Because that wasn't what was being conveyed. Growing up in the Bible Belt, the purpose of those signs was really more of a threat a threat of hell and damnation for not having the right kind of faith and believing correctly. But when you pull back and look at the wider context of this verse, and indeed the entire passage that it's drawn from, a very different picture than that emerges. Today's story is part of a conversation between Jesus and the Pharisee Nicodemus, who has approached him to learn more about Jesus's identity. You might remember that's where we have that conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus about being born again, being born anew, being born from above. How can you go back into your mother's womb um, to be born of the spirit, Jesus tells us. What's more, John 3.16 is sandwiched between the story of Nicodemus visiting Jesus by night and Jesus's encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well in the middle of the day, where he also has a conversation about his identity. And you might remember that he tells her everything about her life and she identifies him as the Messiah. These two stories contain some of the most deeply theological discussions in all of scripture. One with a named religious leader and one with an unnamed foreign woman. One at night in the shadows and one during the day in the brightness of the sun. And in the middle, there is here this discourse on not only Jesus's identity, but on the nature of God's love and the tendency of our human nature to stubborn, stubbornly cling to the ways of the world, that is the darkness, rather than open ourselves to the transformation inherent in believing in God's love, the light. Now the verb believe appears more frequently in John's gospel than in any other New Testament writing. John does this because 
verbs imply action. And this places strong emphasis on the dynamic aspect of believing. In this way, this whole passage about John 3.16 and believing, it's not about believing correctly in order to receive eternal life. It's about the kind of believing that leads us to live lives that show forth God's love. It's not only about this quantity of life then, but also the quality of life, the kind of life that is rooted in loving action and that does indeed transform the world. This is the heart of the gospel. For God so loved the world. Martin Luther called this um, passage the heart of the gospel. It was the gospel in one sentence. And you can read the whole of scripture from creation to the eschaton as God's love story for the world. In story after story in scripture, it is God's loving impulse that reaches out to lead and guide the people of God, showing them and us again and again how life can be transformed through God's love. This is at the heart of a question posed by one of the scholars in a preaching podcast that I listened to this week. And here's the question What difference does it make? to believe in a God who acts from love? I've kept coming back to that question again and again in prayer and reflection this week because it's really an astonishing question. Listen again, what difference does it make to believe in a God who acts from love? As if love was the beginning of everything. I'm gonna put this question on our Facebook page and I hope that you'll take some time this week to pray and to think about it. Not just to think about it as it shows up in scripture, but to think about what it means for your life to believe in a God who acts from that center of love. I think it provides for us a lens for our Lenten pilgrimage, which is bringing us ever closer to Holy Week. That time that we set aside every year to tell our most transformational story, the story that is all about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a story that has at its core a love so powerful that nothing can separate us from it, not even death. I want to say amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe, clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation is invited to offer prayers silently, aloud, or in the comments. Offer prayers today for Gail and her family, for Bishop Chilton, whose husband died this last week. Please offer prayers for her family, prayers of healing for Don and Holly for Holly and Sharon, for Ron, Linda, Bob, Ann, and Dean. Prayers for John and Dorotha. I also offer prayers for healing for Bruce, Don, and Jeannie. Prayers for Patty. Prayers for Becky. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, welcome everyone. It's good to be with you today, even though we had the time change this morning. Um, we're glad that you found your way to worshiping with us online. You can learn more about the mission and ministry of our community by visiting our website or our Facebook page 
or drop me an email and I would love to connect with you as well. Today was the first day of resuming our indoor Holy Eucharist at 8.30. Um, you are welcome to join us if that feels like a place you are ready to be. You do need to reserve seats online. We are capping that um, service at 40 people. And you can find the link directly on our homepage on our website. We are very quickly approaching Holy Week and Easter time. So we are preparing Holy Week and Easter bags that are filled with some devotional items, as well as palms for Palm Sunday and communion kits for Easter day. If you will be worshiping, worshiping with us online, we will have um, at-home communion kits uh, available. So you can pick those up beginning on Saturday, March 27th. That's if, especially if you wanna have palms for Palm Sunday, uh, but they will be available the rest of the week during office hours. And our Holy Week services um, on Palm Sunday, we will have two services, 8.30 a.m. and, of course, here online at 10.30. We will include both the uh, blessing of the palms and have a reading of the Passion. On Monday, Thursday, we will be having only an online service. We will be doing an Agape Supper with readings and prayers. You can read more about that in our newsletter which came out last Thursday online, but basically we're all going to be um, gathering on Zoom to eat dinner together, um, individually in our homes, but together on Zoom, and we will share uh, prayers and readings together. And on Good Friday in the evening, we will have a, um, a, a brief service, about 45 minutes or so, of the Stations of the Cross and prayers um, and artwork. And then on Easter day, again, two services, 8.30 a.m. in person and 10.30 a.m. Um, on Facebook and YouTube. No Zoom that day. We are collecting filled Easter eggs. We have um, decided that we will not be able to have an in-person Easter egg hunt, but we will be passing out bags of filled eggs to all of our families that come to pick up their Easter and Holy Week bags so that they can set up Easter egg hunts at their home. So um, eggs are much appreciated. You can drop them off at the church during business hours or on Sunday mornings. And we have a huge tub of empty eggs. So you're welcome to stop by and fill up a bag of eggs and then bring them back with goodies. And we are also planning something special for our online worship on Easter day. Can I get an alleluia? No, we're not supposed to say that word in Lent, but, um, but we want to do a special, um, a special feature in our online worship. So we are asking everyone, not just those of you with little kids, everyone to make a sign or a poster. It can just be an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper or you can bust out a poster board, but we would like for you to make a sign with the word Alleluia and take a picture of yourself and then send it into the office. And our outreach um, team is committee is um, sponsoring Easter baskets for Lorian, our one of our local um, nursing home rehab facilities. So please drop off items during the week. So that those can be passed on to share some joy this uh, this springtime with residents there. Are there any Thanksgivings of the community today? Birthdays, anniversaries, or other movements of the spirit in your life? Um, you can either put that in the comments on Facebook, or if you're on Zoom, please unmute yourself. Doesn't look like there's anybody on Zoom. Let me just see. Nothing's popping up on Facebook, so we can go ahead. This is our uh, digital offering plate. Just a reminder, as you are able to, please do uh, drop a check in the mail or, um, or in the locked mailbox in front of the church um, for your pledges and gifts. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
You have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. everyone. It's been great being with you today. I hope you enjoy the beautiful sunshine and have a good week and we'll see you back here next Sunday.